So settle into your seat and to start with stretch, stretch your spine up and pull your head up. Like it's being attached to a, to a helium balloon. It's keeping it lifted above the neck. And then with an exhalation, drop your shoulders, drop the torso, let everything come to rest on the skeleton while the head is still floating above on its little helium balloon. And take a few very slow, deep breaths. With every exhalation, allowing all of the thoughts to just drop down. Any concerns that you have for later on today? Any thoughts about the past? Anything other than what's right here, right in front of you, can just be let go of with every exhalation. Feel any tension in the body and feel it release more and more on the next exhalation. If you feel a particular point of pressure or muscular tension, breathe into it on the inhalation and then just let it relax with the next exhalation. So the first thing that I'd like us to look for is this feeling of controlling our attention from thoughts to the bodily sensations. So right now, keeping your attention on the feel of the body. See if you can get an over, overarching sense of the bodily form as it currently sits. See if when you check in with it, if you can really feel a boundary between the skin and the air. Do you feel something that is the exact shape of the body as you believe it to be? Are you noticing pockets of sensation? Something closer to an amorphous cloud of pressure and tingling, warmth and cold, sensitivity and lack of sensitivity. And however it's showing up for you right now, However you are feeling what's being felt, I want you to notice also if you have a mental image about this cloud of sensation or this form of the body. When you feel the sensation in the body, is it just raw sensory information? Just raw tingling? Or is there some subtle visual component that is trying to represent it in some way? And if you have some mental component of that sensation, do you notice that it's also creating it at some sort of a distance? It's like it's locating that sensation in space relative to another sensation and relative to a viewer that seems to be seeing that sensation or seeing the image of those sensations. Keep your attention on the cloud of sensations as they show up. And notice if the sensations themselves really are the visual material. 
are they appearing in a space that we can call visual? Is it possible to feel them without sensing any sort of visual representation? Does it appear that the sensations as they appear, whether they are purely physical or physical plus visual, does it seem that they are at a distance from a viewer of them? Is there something apart from those sensations? Do you notice the sense of distance between the sensation that shows up that we call in your leg or your foot, wherever you feel it the strongest? Does it feel like that sensation is showing up at a distance from something which is witnessing it or experiencing it? If not, just stay with what appears wherever it appears. If it does feel like there's a distance, notice where it seems to be that that witness is located. Is it somewhere in the head or the space that we would consider to be the head? And if so, take note to see if the physical eyes are actually pointing down towards the sensation that's being felt. Notice what is giving you the sensation that you are looking down or viewing from above Your eyes are closed, so nothing that you experience in your visual field is actually true about the body. So what are we relying upon to have this imaginary sense that a physical sensation can be appearing at a distance from something witnessing or recognizing the physical sensation? Are there clouds of sensations in what we would call the head, which are being referenced and compared against the sensation in the foot or the leg? And is there a feeling of one being in a different location than the other? And if that's the case, 
And if we just have two different bundles of sensation located in space in comparison to each other, then why is it that the head sensation is taken to be the, the self, the viewer, the watcher, the knower, and the foot or leg sensation is not? And if you can feel right now your hand or your arm, why is it that that feeling, that sensation, is not considered to be the self, the viewer, the knower, or the watcher? Where is this bias for this head-based locality of the viewer? Is there any difference in the sensation between those appearing in the foot or the leg or the hand and the arm or the head? And if there isn't any physical difference in the sensations, then is there a thought difference? Is there a mental visual image which is contributing to this feeling of being a watcher in the head and not in the leg? So while holding at least 50% of your attention on the physical sensations in the body, I want you to use the other half of the attention to monitor the visual mental space, the internal visual world. And notice if there are images of the body, of the face, is there some sort of vague mental sense of you? This could show up a variety of different ways. But just be on the lookout for anything that shows up claiming to be a viewer, a knower, or a self. Does it have something to do with the vague amount of light that is coming in through the backs of the eyelids and giving a sense of energy, a sense of lightness, perhaps even creating visual sensations behind the eyes, different color patterns, moving, swirling colors, static, something that seems lifelike.
Keep your attention split between the physical sensations and the visual phenomenon that are appearing. And see if there are any auditory thoughts creeping in. Any self-talk thoughts. Anything that seems to be saying that I am up here for a given reason or that you know why you feel located in the head as opposed to in the foot. Become aware also if maybe it's not that you have an overt dialogue going on in the head, but perhaps there is a feeling of the location of sound from the room, sound of my voice, that there is a location of all of the sounds in the environment happening somewhere in the same place in the head. And does that seem to be all of these auditory sensations? Does the space that they are appearing in seem to be somehow above the space in which the sensations of the leg and the foot are located? Do we have a sense that the auditory world and the visual world are all happening somewhere up near the head while the physical sensations spread out and dangle somewhere below it? If so, see if you can recognize that the auditory space and the visual space are exactly the same. That sounds are appearing in the same place that vision is showing up. It's all located in a place which is indefinable and yet clearly the only space that exists. Does it seem to be inside of the head or outside? Are sounds happening inside of the head or outside of the body? And is the visual world happening inside of the head or outside of the body? Even with the eyes closed, the filtered light coming in through the eyelids, the imagined imagery going through the mind, They're all happening in the same place as the sounds. So is that inside or outside of the body? Mm -hmm. 
What are you using to tell? Do you feel sensations in the face, the eyelids, the sides of the head, the jaw, the neck, the tongue, the chest, the arms, the torso, the feet and the legs? And are those seeming boundaries being used to reinforce a sense of interiority and exteriority? Do you notice something weird that the sensations of the physical body below the neck don't seem to confine to that same rigid interiority that you might have felt in the face and in the head. They seem to extend below and out and in an unbounded, unbordered sort of way. So the visual field and the auditory field might seem somehow trapped within the confines of an imaginary head, while the rest of the body is expansive and free and has no seeming rigidity. So if you experience this, place attention on the felt sensations in the face, the eyes, the muscles around the eyes, the eyelids, tension in the forehead, the temples, feelings around the ears, the top of the head, the back of the head, the jaw, the tongue, the lips, the throat, Everything that you feel, recognize that it's just sensation and it's just moving. And on the next exhalation, release all of that tension. And recognize that the head is no more bounded, no more rigidly fixed as the rest of the body. It's completely open, completely without shape, form, density, weight, appearance. And so all of the sensations, the visual and the auditory and the physical are all happening in the same unbounded space. And now, is there any interiority or exteriority to that space? In this no space, completely unbounded, where all sensory phenomenon are appearing, can you tell the difference between the sense information of a sound versus a sight versus a physical sensation? you start to recognize that they are all made of the same 
undefinable substance. From this unbounded, undifferentiated space, I would like for you to allow a thought to arise. It can be any kind of thought, perhaps visual, perhaps an image of something. And see if it feels like from this space that you have any control over the choice of what image or what sound, or what a short movie starts to appear in this space. Does it feel like you have chosen? Does it feel like you have chosen how long it's going to continue? If it's gone already, did you decide to end it? Allow another image to come up. And this time, I would like you to recognize what it feels like to have something called attention on that image. Do you recognize that there are images that show up perhaps your initial thought image, and that you then have another image that shows up of the face, the eyes, something in reference to it that seems to be seeing that image, the original thought, from a distance, that seems to be implying a watcher of the thought. And did you notice any physical sensations that accompanied that image of a watcher? That idea of something viewing the idea? Try it again. This time, think of the image of a purple flower. Do you see where that image of a purple flower is appearing? Is it in the same space as all of the other mental images, all of the sound images, and all of the physical sensations? But is there something which seems to be telling you that there is a witnessing of that purple flower, which is unique to just having the sensations experienced as sensations? Does there seem to be a third thing which is implied? The implication that there is some vague self who is aware of that purple flower who perhaps chose that particular flower from that particular angle, the duration that that image of the flower was going to last, and that recognized that that is a purple flower and not a yellow car. There's an idea that you know what a purple flower looks like, and you chose that purple flower image. How is that felt? Is it 
Is there tension in the felt space that seems to be reinforcing this feeling of knowing? Is it a feeling of grasping, a feeling of tension, like there is a holding on to of control? And if you feel something like that in the physical space, I want you now to think of an image again, this time of a red flower. Take a moment to observe the red flower, recognize it in as much detail as you can. See the petals and the stem, whether it has thorns or not, whether it has leaves. Is it outside growing in nature or is it in a bouquet or a flower pot? Take in all of that detail and feel what it's like right now to be taking in that detail. Are you tightening up the muscles around the eyes and the forehead? Is there tension somewhere else in the body that seems to be contributing to the feeling of you being able to focus your attention on details in the visual field? Continue scrutinizing the flower, giving it as much attention as possible. And continue feeling anything that is continuing to give you the idea that you are paying attention to that flower and are focusing deeply on the details. And then feeling what that feels like, I want you to shift all of your attention to the physical sensations. And this time, bringing them to whatever jumps out at you the strongest and is the easiest to put your attention on. It might be in the limb, it might be in the torso, but I want you to have that full weight of your attention on that one feeling of density, that one feeling of intense sensation of vibration, tingling, effervescence, however it appears. And notice as you do, are your eyes following that area? Are they pointed to whatever it seems to be that you are seeing in your mind's eye? Is there that same feeling of tension in the body corresponding to a holding on to, a contracting? trying to grasp something and understand it. Are there mental images that are showing that spot in the body, as well as the physical sensations themselves? Are there mental images showing your body, your eyes, something which is being taken as that self, that watcher, that scrutinizer. I want you to notice whatever feels like it, it is that is necessary to use to feel a feeling of attention. 
I want you to notice whatever it seems to be that is causing that sensation of attention to be happening. Is it in the felt body sense? Is it a visual sense? And is it a combination that are all happening in the same place and being tied up together into a feeling of you? One last time, I'd like you to bring to mind an image of a house. And notice as that happens, what feels like the attention shifting. Does it feel like something changes in the body to take you out of the sensations in the physical sense and then moving them to the visual sense, field. What is it that feels like it's affecting the change in attention? Take a moment to scrutinize the house, the number of windows, what color is the front door, how many floors the house has, What's the weather like around the house? What color is the house? What kind of siding it has? And feel what it feels like to pay attention to those details. And then in a moment, I want you to be completely conscious of all of the physical sensations, all of the mental visual sensations and all of the mental oral sensations as you shift that attention to focus on your left foot. So when it happens, it happens. But notice if it feels like you are choosing when to shift the attention from the mental space of the house to the physical space of the left foot. And if you are using any muscles, any sensations in the body in order to affect that change, and if there's anything that feels like it is contributing to the sense of agency, who is able to do this thing, who is able to make this change. As we wrap up, I would like you to just come back to the feelings of the sensations of the body. Feeling the grounding of the bottom on the chair and the feet on the floor. You can maintain that sense of openness and spaciousness if it's still there. The lack of clear boundaries of the skin, bones, of the outlines of the body. You can still feel that openness, but feel the weighted groundedness, the gravity pulling you back down. If you feel too untethered or too unstable, 
and you can lose that sense of boundary if need be. But if you can allow it to be there, just let it be there. And then very slowly, I'm going to ask you to open the eyes, but before you do, keep focused on the lack of separation between the physical, the aural, and the visual senses. And even as the eyes start to open and allow in a little light and a little color and shape, I want you to recognize that it is still happening in that same undefinable, spaceless, no space where auditory sounds and physical sensations are all showing up. So very slowly start to open your eyes and see if you can maintain that pervasiveness, that indefinable unity of sensory phenomenon until they're completely open. Thank you.